Suspected Pioneer Hill serial rapist made his first appearance in court Friday. Find out when his arraignment in Whitman County is. And what events will be happening as WSU celebrates Showcase Week, coming up next. Public Broadcasting Studios on the campus of Washington State University. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Abby Davis. And I'm Michelle Harmon. Welcome to Murrow News 8. In regional news, the Spokane Police Department arrested 47-year-old Kenneth Downing Thursday for a series of rapes and home invasions that happened nearly two decades ago. Downing, who is from Elk, appeared in Whitman County Superior Court where his bond was set at $5 million or $500,000 cash bail. Pullman Police Department Detective Sergeant Aaron Brashears says law enforcement used forensic genetic genealogy to analyze the DNA of suspects and break the case. Brashears says justice is finally getting served. A significant part of what it means is that people who were victimized in 2003 and in 2004 will finally have some justice and a person who committed very violent offenses against some young women in our community will be held accountable. Downing's first court appearance is Friday, and if convicted, Downing faces a life in prison. A 39-year-old Pullman woman, Crystal Webb, was reported missing on March 14th by her roommate. The roommate said Webb left on March 12th to meet someone from a dating website. According to Pullman Police Sergeant Todd Dow, Webb called her roommate on March 19th to assure her she's okay and everything is fine. Two College Hill residents are being investigated for animal abuse and neglect after a dozen dead animals were found in their unit. An animal control officer received a report of a dead dog and a dead ferret. When a Pullman police officer arrived at the scene, he found the dead dog on the floor and 11 more deceased animals. Two cats, two hedgehogs, one bearded dragon, one gecko, and a tortoise. The live animals were taken to the Washington State University Vet School and the Whitman County's Humane Society Animal Haven. No arrests have been made and the residents' identities are unknown. A section of Fairmount Drive between Walmart and Pullman Regional Hospital will be closed starting on Monday for construction of a new bank. The closure is part of the work to build a P1 FCU branch on Fairmont Drive. There is no word on how long the street closure will last, so plan your travels accordingly as traffic may pile up during rush hour in this area. The 2022 WSU Academic Showcase and GPSA Research Exposition starts today. Our live reporter Vasily Varlamos is at Kimbrough Concert Hall with the details. Thanks guys, the Academic Showcase is a, is a week-long celebration of WSU students and faculty's accomplishments from this year. The five-day celebration will include multiple speeches, presentations, uh, competitions, as well as poster sessions, along with a award ceremony and a banquet on Friday. The, the uh, showcase began today with a distinguished, acad or a distinguished faculty address currently happening here at Kimbrough Music Hall in room 115 right beside me. Professor Kerry McCarthy is giving an address about the importance of live music in a post-COVID society. This will co continue on until 6 p.m. for those who are looking to go. Tomorrow, pr uh, President Kirk Schultz will be giving a State of the University address online. The rest of the week will be filled with numerous speeches and presentations about the recent success of research between graduate students, professors, and other university personnel. More information on each event will be on, on uh, showcase.wsu.edu online. Back to you guys. Thanks, Vasily. WSU students, faculty, and alumni who authored or edited a book this year were honored today at the Crimson Reads event. Through this program, WSU libraries recognize these WSU authors as they shared their successes in the publishing industry. WSU State of Uni the University is tomorrow at 3 p.m. President Schultz will answer questions virtually from the Tri-Cities campus. Following the keynote, 
Two WCU faculty members will moderate the Q&A sessions. Those who tune into the event will hear from Schultz about how WCU continues to respond to COVID-19. He will also give an update about the One WCU system, which restructuring up WCU finances, leadership roles, and research. Find out which bank WSU is partnering up with to link debit cards. And how a sizable donation to the WSU College of Pharmacy will impact rural Washington communities after the break. Days, months. Hey, I'm Jim from across the street. Years. I'd like to give you this. A lifetime. We can rush by without realizing what we're missing. We lose some of the best moments, some that may never repeat, Come on. or detach from people around us. Our loved ones grow used to this pattern, but it doesn't have to be that way. We have a choice to take action. It's never too late to live a full life again. Hear how many of us Vietnam veterans have managed our mental health and reconnected with our families. Visit maketheconnection.net to find out more. Cougar cards will soon be able to double as Washington State Employees Credit Union debit cards. WSU and the Credit Union announced a five-year partnership that will allow Cougar cards to be linked as a W as a WSECU checking account. WSU's partnership with WSECU comes as the school's partnership with U.S. Bank is set to expire on June 30th. Although the partnership with U.S. Bank is expiring, Cougar Card Max cards will still work until the expiration date on the card. An anonymous donation of $2.2 million to Washington State's University's College of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences made it possible to launch the CPPS Rural Health Initiative. The initiative would improve healthcare access in rural communities throughout Washington State. The Rural Health Initiative is a 10-year plan that can give opportunities to student pharmacists and postgraduate pharmacists to specialize in rural health care. Many citizens in rural communities are underserved, and the Rural Health Initiative has the ability to change lives and communities. The Senate unanimously agreed to legislation making daylight savings time the permanent setting for U.S. clocks. The legislation ends the ritual of changing clocks back and forth every spring and fall. The bill now moves to the House of Representatives for debate. It was the first day of spring yesterday, but it didn't look very nice out today. Hey Colby, what will we be getting the first week of spring? Yeah, so it may seem a little gray and drab out there. It might even seem like that groundhog kind of lied to us a few weeks ago. However, I might have some news to brighten up your day a little bit, but first things first, let's get into today and tomorrow's forecast. For today's forecast, we had a high of 44 degrees and a low of 39. Right now, we're sitting around 42, 43 degrees, so those temperatures are going to continue to drop to that 39 degree low, so keep that jacket around if you're going to be out a little, little later than expected. For today's forecast, or tomorrow's forecast, excuse me, it's going to be around the same for lows anyways, 39 degree lows, but 55 degree highs, we're going to shoot up into the mid 50s. Sunrise tomorrow is going to be at 647 a.m. Sunset's going to be at 704 tomorrow p.m. Now let's get to the state map. Let's see what's going around across the state. Um, right now, Spokane is sitting around, uh, it's kind of the same, 43 degree highs, 39 degree lows. Um, we're going to go westward across the state here. Tri-Cities at 40, 50 degrees, kind of comfortable if you ask me, 46 degree lows. Then we're going to go over to Yakima right here, 57 degree highs, 41 degree lows. We're going to move westward throughout the Cascades, 50, degree apiece, 50 degrees apiece for Olympia and Seattle as highs, 46 degree lows for Olympia, 47 degree lows for Seattle. Now we're going to go to the five-day forecast. We already talked about Monday and Tuesday. However, Wednesday is the day I have circled on my calendar. 64 degree highs. That's right. We're going to get into the mid-60s. It's going to feel nice. Thursday, 57 degree highs. We're going to drop down a little bit on Thursday. Now Friday is going to be 62. Partly, it says partly cloudy on the board. I'm a half 
glass half full kind of guy myself. I say partly sunny, 62 degree highs, 42 degree lows. That is my time on the board. I'm going to toss you back to Michelle and Abby at the desk. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Colby. I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that increasing temperature. And up next, March Madness is in full swing. Find out who the big winners from the first two rounds were. And how the Cougs played in the second round of the NIT in sports with Shane after the break. It's okay to be scared. Hmm? You don't have to be so strong. Strength is not optional. This is my mother, my purpose. Real muscle is lifting her spirits between bedpans and bad news from doctors that doubt her strength. Strength is buried in bills, managing meds, and swallowing those moments of, Mom, it's me, your daughter. Remember, my strength is super, but I'm still human, right? Look who's here. There she is. Thanks for your patience. How you feel? If you're caring for a loved one, visit aarp.org slash caregiving for care guides and community. Or call 1-877-333-5885. I'm Shane Merwin with Sports. It was an exciting first weekend of March Madness that included plenty of upsets. 11th ranked Iowa State upset Wisconsin in a game where defense ended up being the difference. Michigan stunned Tennessee to advance to their fifth straight Sweet 16 as number one ranked Baylor was upset by North Carolina after sending the game to overtime following a 25 point deficit. Lastly, St. Peter's made history with their upset victory over Murray State. They were now only the third 15 seed to advance to the Sweet 16. Games picked back up again on Thursday and it's safe to expect astonishing finishes throughout. WSU men's basketball advanced to the quarterfinals of the NIT with a win over the SMU Mustangs, 75-63. SMU did go on a 24-9 run late in the contest, but it was not enough as the Cougs closed it out with an 11-3 run of their own. The Cougs will now travel to Provo, Utah to take on 2-seed BYU on Wednesday. The game will tip off at 6 p.m. and will be airing on ESPN2. Wazoo baseball lost 3-14 to Washington last night, resulting in the Huskies getting the three-game sweep. A contest that was tied at the top of the fourth would end up resulting in 11 unanswered runs by UW. Cougs will hope to get back on track at Santa Clara this Wednesday at 6 p.m. before starting their series matchup against Stanford. I don't know about y'all, but that was a very good, ex a very exciting weekend of sports, uh, especially March Madness. Were y'all in tune with all that? You know, I haven't been following along too much this year, but I'm always rooting for the Zags. How about you, Michelle? You know, I'm a fan of the underdogs, so I'm going to be rooting for the St. Peter's Peacocks this year. Yes, the underdogs are always wonderful to watch. And after the break, find out who will be debating in the WSU Multicultural event tonight. Right now, ASWSU presidential candidates Sidney Finch, Kelt Visser, Jacob Martinez, and County Parsi are addressing how they plan on representing WSU's multicultural students in the second debate of the election season. This year, there are two tickets for ASWSU president and vice president. All right, well, that's it for tonight's thanks newscast. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.